Yo, what's good guys, it's JD here, hello and welcome back to another Season 8 video. Um, <laughs> thankfully, we're the final Season 8 videos because there's only three days remaining and I think we're all pretty happy to see the end of this season. Um, I, I didn't really want to make a video about this, you know, I don't really make negative videos anymore because I just can't be bothered because 2K just don't seem to care about them. Um, but today we got another update in Season 8 that just kind of cements its place as the worst season I think we've ever had. Obviously, recency bias is very, very real. It's a real thing. Um, I can't remember if you asked me what was in season five last year. Not a clue. I'd need my memory jogging. But I can't remember being more disappointed on a consistent basis than this year's season eight. Let me know down below. Out of ten, a rating for this season. I will try and give one at the end of this video. We're going to try and break down everything that's happened this season. It's not going to take long because there hasn't been much. Uh, and see what kind of number I come out with out of 10. I don't know what I'm going to give it right now, but uh, let me tell you, it ain't going to be high. Uh, but the reason, the thing that's kind of pushed me to make this video is the token market update today, which I wish hadn't have happened. A hero pack, uh, one hero, 750 tokens. I've already opened up one of these, and I turned 750 tokens into a hero Hakeem who sold for... Drum roll, please. 8,800 MT. 750 tokens into 8,800 MT. And they also added in an amethyst, a diamond, a pink diamond, and an opal for 300 tokens in August. This company knows no lows. Um, they can keep going to uh, the depths. I just don't understand how they keep messing up so consistently. It's pretty impressive. And at this point, I just think they want to make this the worst season so that moving forward, if anything goes wrong ever, they can always go, well, hey, not as bad as season eight in 2K22. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it, and let's break down why season eight has been an absolute disaster, has been just constant disappointment, and will go down as the worst season in 2K history. Hopefully, Jesus Christ, if they do worse than this, then my God, let, let's hope this is the worst it ever gets. But let me know down below, like I said, a rating out of 10, what you think this season has been. So let's jump into it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for the daily videos. And check out facebook.com slash jdcrossover for the daily streams. FIFA, Battlefield, Fortnite, 2K, hella lots going on. Um, so yeah, check out Facebook. But um, let's let's begin. Let's take it back. Five weeks ago, six weeks ago, we were fresh-faced, excited. Season 8 was coming. Oh my god, there's going to be end games everywhere. It's going to be amazing. Um, so level 40, uh, Nikola Jokic, center point guard. Not mad at it, to be fair. Um, you know, and the XP grind itself, so easy. Like, stupidly easy. I'm actually going to check real quick here. Um, how much XP has been available this season? 515,000 XP has been available. I needed 150k for Nikola Jokic. So it's basically handed everyone Nikola Jokic. Um, not really got any problems there. He's got the Curry release. No, he's he's Exum, isn't he? I think he's Exum release. Not the best. Didn't really use him that much, but it is what it is. Um, triple Threat, you had... Uh, not an endgame card, just an Invincible Dominique, an Invincible Elgin Baylor. Just random, nothing crazy there. We'll get to the mid-season updates for TTR. I'm just talking about the main game modes that we got on day one. Uh, we've got a, do a new Domination. Now, uh, I think we can all say we're absolutely bored of fed up of Domination. You know, we've done six of these already this year. Five-minute quarter games, horrendously under-rewarding. And they give us another one to do in the middle of July. Uh, it was for James Harden with that curry base. Not really got a problem with him as a card or the release or anything like that. But another domination that takes another 15 hours to do for one card at the end of it. It's just not going to happen, is it, 2K? It's just not going to happen. So that was already a disappointment. Seeing there's a challenge, just one of those. Uh, and then clutch time with Chris Webber. That was fine. You know, I got Chris Webber. Quite enjoyed it along the way. Uh, Wheel spins got Mark Eaton. And as Jazz found out the other day, it took him 400 games to get him. So that's bad. And it wasn't even endgame. Just an invincible. Uh, draft has an invincible in it. I'm pretty sure. TTO is his invincible. Unlimited invincible. And limited was the invincible option pack. Of repeated rewards. Um, I guess we'll talk about limited now. Uh, the fact that they had the nerve to say. Hey go play six weekends. Of online. Of randomness. You know you might get the ring game one. It might take you ten games. Um, and then we'll give you a choice of five cards. That you can already buy for nothing. Because bearing in mind. The Invincibles were available when these packs were already out. You know, it was Friday at 4pm my time. These packs dropped at Friday 4pm. And then the limited pack was available after Friday at 4pm. So you were getting a choice of five 
the Visma cards that would cost you like 20k uh, for six weeks of your time. So a massive middle finger to everyone who played limited this season. Really don't like that. Really dropped the ball on that one. So limited, a huge, huge L this season. Um, then I suppose we'll talk about, uh, well, I guess a token mark had something, didn't it? It had um, Dr. J. Dr. J was fine. I took him. He was half decent. No end game again, just invincible, but you know, he was there. And the exchange didn't even have an invincible. Just a Dark Matter Jaron Jackson Jr. Because, sure, okay, I guess. Uh, right, so the only thing that we really had this season was packs. Uh, and it was the two player pack drops. Now. They are good and they are bad. Now, I don't mind them, and I know the argument is, a lot of the time, it's great because it gives people a low-rated version of the card to be able to use. So, you know, these versions come in so cheap, you can get a Dharma version of your, your favourite player for next to nothing. Completely agree. That's fine. That's good. No problem at all. However, you can have this dirt cheap version, you can have the mid-tier version with the Invincible, and then the dumbass expensive version in the endgame one, without having two additional... Completely irrelevant but versions with like five different bad five different badges. You know, you'd have a card that's invincible with 65, then there'd be a random swish version with 60, a fearless version with 55. There's absolutely no need for that. What they should have done is had extra invincibles from the endgame person's team. So when it's Kobe and Magic's drop, have a hell have a lot more Laker cards in there. When it was um, you know, JR Smith and... Oh, who was JR Smith with? JR, JR was with Taco, wasn't he? Was JR Smith and Taco have a couple of Nuggets in there, a couple of Knicks in there, and a couple of Celtics in there. You know, do that to pad out. So the two-player drops were good, but also left a lot to be desired. And it was so boring opening up packs and you'd be like, oh, I wonder who this is going to be. Oh, it's Michael Jordan, is it? Yeah. And then you got to wait until you actually see the card art to know if it was a good one or not, whether or not you should celebrate or not. That's not good. I like being able to see the number and thing and the position and be like, okay, I need to start celebrating now rather than just waiting. Um, it was good for entry level ones. Again, I'm not going to just be shitting on the entire video. You know, it was good that they give gave people lower rated ones or like, you know, entry level cards. But the double player drop, I hope it doesn't return. I hope it doesn't return. So we had the uh, two player drops I and mean, that's pretty much all we had. Um, we had the token market updates for three Mondays. That's it. Yep, three. Um, not counting today, of course. We've got 10 Hoff badges, 75 tokens each, 10 more Hoff badges, 75 tokens each, and 10 more Hoff badges, 75 tokens each. They dropped 30 out of 80 and then said, that'll do, that'll do. Uh, already, this is far too late. Two months later than they did it last year. Well, nearly three months later than they did it last year by the time we got the third one. So two to three months later than last year, uh, more expensive than last year for some of these badges. Some of them are cheaper, but in general, I think they're more expensive because they're all uh, flat out 75. And last year we had some at 11, 23, 50. We had quite a lot of 50 last year. So I think more expensive um, and just just so, so much later than they were last year. So again, they dropped the ball massively with the token market. And because we're here, we'll talk about it today, and this dish really is the, the nail in the coffin of the, the, the spit, they're spitting on the grave of season eight. Season eight already been destroyed, but um, they're spitting on the grave now. This is pathetic. I would so much rather they did nothing than, than do this. Um, 750 tokens for one Dark Matter card in August. 300 tokens for an Opal card in August. Like, just tell me you're out of touch without just literally tweeting out, hey, we're completely out of touch with the community. Do it with actions. This is how I would do it. If you told me do something so stupid that a company would never do it, this is how I would do it. This is absolutely diabolical. If you're looking to turn tokens into MT, do this. Literally, open up jersey packs. I could have got another 50k MT, 60k MT, by opening up these and discarding these and doing that for 750 tokens rather than doing one hit and just wasting my time there. So, token market's been a joke, it should be exciting, we should have a way to spend our tokens at the end of the year that actually means something. And uh, yeah, today was just, it wasn't even a swing, it was just a miss. It was just an absolute miss, so that's very, very sad. Uh, so that's what we got on the Mondays, well, four out of the six Mondays anyway. Uh, then on Wednesdays, we were getting the random TTO events. Um, you guys know my feelings about random events. They're not events. You know, people play hundreds of games every week. And fair play to those people, by the way. I don't know how you had the patience to do that. People playing hundreds of games every week, getting nothing, and that's it. You know, they tried to participate in an event, they couldn't, and it sucks. Uh, and even during that, you know, we still had Monday to Wednesday when the vault looked like this. And now the vault is looking like this till Friday. It's August, bro. What is that? 
500 MT in August, a dynamic ratings pack in August. I'm going to say in August a lot this video. Do a shot every time I say that. Uh, but it's just, it's just so, I touch just, this, this right now should be filled with every end game pack because you still got the, the specific duo packs, you know. Put the specific duo packs in here. Who cares? Um, but that looks very, very sad. Same situation for Triple Online as well. There is an end game Kobe and Shaq pack in there at least, but it still looks very, very sad. And it just doesn't make sense. Uh, another thing to talk about is the pickup challenge. You know, they did change it to the end game Shaq and Kobe pack. However, I gave up on that when I was 0 for 20 on getting a Dark Matter. I was 0 for 20 and I said, nah, not for me anymore. And if you guys played this challenge at all, I'm sure you know, this is just straight pink diamonds. Um, and it still hasn't changed from a Shaq and Kobe pack at this point in time. Why is that not now this pack? Why is it not just an endgame pack? I'll play it each day for an endgame pack, sure. Why not? But still just Kobe and Shaq, and they didn't even change it at all, I don't think, this season, when it was the new cards dropping. I think they just kept it as that and said, here you go, do that now, and that's, that's curtains. So that also left a little bit of a sour taste. We couldn't even get one of the relevant packs. Uh, it was just always a Kobe and Shaq pack. So that was a bit of a shame. Uh, we've got no lifetime agendas this season. We've got no spotlights this season, which is staggering. Absolutely staggering. Last year, we were doing the end game of what they gauntlet spotlights for a taco full. This year, absolutely nothing. Uh, we got no grindable content in season eight when people have got teams, they've got players to use, they've got teams that look like this that they want to use. And, and we've got nothing to do. And, you know, yes, there's going to be the argument of, hey, it's August, play for fun. But, like, when you play in other games for fun and getting rewarded for it, why would you just then settle for a game that's just well, that's fun, if you can have fun on this game, um, without getting the reward aspect of it, when you can get that elsewhere? So, you know, it's not the fact that you need to have that reward. It's the fact that other games have it. And if other games have it, they're going to steal your customers. So it just doesn't make sense not to do it. If you are somebody who's watching this right now and thinking, well, I can play the game for fun, that's great, and I'm really happy you can. And yes, that works fine for you, but why would 2K as a company not want to put something in for other people? Because you're going to play regardless, but there's a lot of people that will only play if there's something to play for. So why would they not try and get a bigger net and get more people to play the game? That's what I don't understand about this company. So they stopped doing spotlights and agendas, that didn't happen. Uh, they also gave up on locker codes, didn't they? Locker codes just completely stopped. We've got Bill Russell one, um, but they, they just stopped doing locker codes. So that's cool. I guess one free pack a week was too much to ask for. So that, that stopped. Uh, this season, we've got no Evos, no Duos, no Beyond Level 40. Um, what else did we get? You know, no Agendas. Uh, and no new exchanges either throughout the, uh, throughout the season. So just a whole season of of nothingness and then to top it oh, I think this is the most regret I'll save the worst till last the return of heroes lock-in collection now they made us wait five weeks collecting cards every Tuesday uh, well every Tuesday and every Friday sorry uh, they made us wait two uh, five weeks for this set you know they build it out to be this incredible epic reward um, and they made us wait five weeks we collected them all um, I bought them all it wasn't that one was it this one Anniversary set. Not that one. Don't worry. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm heated. I'm heated. This set. They made us wait five weeks for this, collecting the cards every Tuesday and every Friday. Um, I paid... I mean, I haven't even bought the Hollow Larry or Hollow Magic, so I just don't care. I probably paid 20k per card, I'm going to say. So I probably paid 200k for the uh, West, 200k for the East here. And if you bought these retrospectively, you would have been paying a lot more of that, of course. So I'm going to say about 400k I've got in that set. And, you know, when he found out the lock-in reward, it was like, you know what, okay, that's that's not actually that bad. So it was Giannis, Kareem, Kobe, LeBron, and MJ. Uh, and at the time, they had value of anywhere between three to 500,000 MT. So that's not bad, you know. You think, okay, that's that's that's, that's half decent, that is. They're obviously unauctionable cards, untradable versions, and, you know, we, we kind of made peace with that. I took LeBron and Michael Jordan over here. But to then, three days later, say, oh, you guys locked in that set. Oh, yeah, we made a massive deal about that. Well, get wrecked, because here comes the end game packs to reduce the price of every card in that lock-in to be a buyout. I, it, it just, I just don't understand why they couldn't have waited 
even a week and a half. Why they didn't do these at the start of Season 9? They really just ran out and they were just like, ah, it's the end of Season 8, but let's just put them out now because we can't be bothered to put in any new cards. To not even wait till Season 9 to drop those and to then make some of these cards cost. I think the cheapest is the Hero LeBron, or not the Hero LeBron, sorry, the, uh, the Heat LeBron. Um, so I spent 200k to lock in this card to use him for three days before 2k went ahead and said, lol, RIP to your value, bro. That LeBron you can now buy for, I believe he's under 50k. His price might be changing. 45k. 45k. I could buy all five of those endgame cards now for less than... Less than a quarter of a mil, I'm going to say. Maybe less than 300k. Because that MJ ain't too much either. I think MJ's probably about 50. LeBron 50, it's 100k. Kobe's like 8, 75, we'll say 175. Kareem, yeah, I'd say about 300k you could buy all of them for. And then guess what? You can sell them back when you double them. So the anniversary collection, just absolutely awful. Um, really out of touch, really um, disappointing way to end the year. Just a massive slap in the face to everybody again. Another middle finger up to everybody. So a middle finger to the community for that lock-in. A middle finger to the community for the limited lock-in. A middle finger to the community for this whatever this is in, in August, I don't understand, uh, and just, just a whole bunch of nothing this this, this season. Um, and then that's not even talking about the fact that the endgame cards had two releases among 29 cards, and it was just Attack of the Clones, Star Wars Episode 2. It's just Attack of the Clones, you know. We wanted the best animations, sure, I get it, but there's more than two best jump shots in the game. There's quite a few, there's some decent jump shots out there, Exum's out there, Burke's out there. Um, if they think... Curry is good enough for Nikola Jokic, not Nikola Jokic, um, James Harden. Why is it not good enough for one of these? Is it only good enough on a free card because you think it's worse and you want the free card to be worse? Why does that make sense? Uh, the whole concept of the endgame cards got old very, very quickly. They all do exactly the same dunks. They are all exactly the same out on the court. Um, you're just paying for the name, really, but you can use any of these cards and they're going to be exactly the same. So endgames, I'd say, again, a hit and a miss. It's the first time they've done something like this and I hope they don't do it again. Um, so, uh, a season of, of of nothingness, really. A season of packs and random events. Uh, I, I hasten to call them events. Random players in, in vaults and stuff. Packs. A massively disappointing lock-in. Another massively disappointed lock-in for Limited. And that's, that's pretty much it. So, if I had to give Season 8 a rating... Oh, my God. Um, Jokic... Level 40, end game, very, very, very easy to get him. I guess I'll give him a point for that. Domination, awful. Shouldn't be doing a domination in July. Uh, you should mix it up. It should be a spotlight or something. Five minute quarter games, 15 hours, July, nope, awful. Um, this whole section, dead. Uh, clutch time, I, I, I quite like Chris Webber. And again, he had base 110. Why did nobody else have base 110? Doesn't make any sense. Um, the clutch time was, was nice. Um, I'll, I'll give him another point for endgame Chris Webber just because he was good and I did play those 100 games. So I'll give him two points. Um, and I I think I'm going to stall there. I think I'm going to struggle to get any higher than a 2 out of 10 for season number 8. Um, the Hoff badge is here, but it's way too little too late and expensive as well. Uh, the exchange was, was dead. The Evos were dead. Um... Uh, there, there was there was nothing else, was there? Absolutely nothing else. Oh, the Season 8. Uh, oh. hey, I'm going to dock a point here, I'm going to lie. The Season 8 card art. I, I can't not dock a point for that. Oh, and also, I oh know, it's coming down to one. It's coming down to one, I'm sorry. The sheer laziness to drop a set that looks like that in Season 8 is wild. Also, the fact that all card arts this season were pretty much copy and paste. Um, you know, they didn't make a new set for all of the sort of endgame cards. You know, endgame cards were copy and pasted. Um, you know, most of them just got extras into Switch sets, which already existed. Um, you know, out of position, which already existed. Uh, where else did they put them? I think it's like they gave some of them some flash glitch cards, didn't they, which already existed. Um, you know, they gave them cards which, which were already out there, sets which were already out there. And also, what are we playing in? We're playing in Season 8. What's it called? It's called Season 8. It's not. It doesn't have a name. 2K literally couldn't even be bothered to come up with a name. We should have known it was going to be the season of nothing when the name was literally nothing. So I'm down to a one. We should have known all along. I'm, I'm going to give it a one. So maybe like half a point for Nikola Jokic, half a point for Chris Webber. And other than that, I don't have anything good to say about season eight. It's compared to where we were last year, 
compared to the fact that this this should be the time of the year when the most users are playing this game, you know, the casuals, they want to play when there's 99 everything's out there. They want to play when they're getting free end game cards. You can play this set of spotlights, get this card, play this challenge, which you've got to do whatever and do whatever and have fun with it. Score X amount of you know, points with what whatever card. And they've just missed on every single avenue at every single turn. It blows my mind. I don't understand why. They could have made themselves so much more money, which is obviously what 2K want to do. Um, they, they've cost themselves... I don't know how much they've cost themselves from packs, but, uh, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars 2K have cost themselves by by their laziness. Um, that's the only way to describe it. I don't know, you know, you can say, you know, well, they're working on 2K23. I'd rather have a good 2K23 than a good end to 2K22 and then a bad start to 2K23. Uh, I would say hire more people, 2K. Hire people that can work on a game that we pay for. A, you know, we've bought this game as a live service game for 12 months. It's a 12-month live service game. That's what it's billed as. And we've gone the entirety of July with nothing. We're going to get the entirety of August with nothing. So we've just given up two months. And, you know, you could maybe argue June as well, because we've got the Embiid spotlights at the start of June, but even they were a little bit ropey. Uh, but we'll give them June. So we'll say two months of nothing. Season three, they went on vacation. That's another month that was nothing. So three months out of the 12, we've had nothing. And then the last week of every season as well is also, as we all know, nothing. Um, so you're looking at like maybe seven months out of the 12 with content and five months with nothing. That's kind of wild. If they could just hire some more people so we don't have to deal with so much dead time, that'd be great. And we should never have to be in a position where we're like, ah, uh, you know, if they're focusing on 2K23, I'm happy. No, don't settle for this. This is so far below any other video game out there right now. So far below. FIFA right now is booming they release at a similar time uh, and they've got people engaged and are bringing in new users as we speak 2k are just losing the users by the day and uh yeah season eight thank god it's nearly over um as for season nine my expectations i don't have any it'll just be reused cards i don't think there's going to be any new card um i think the fact that we didn't get any new cards on friday speaks volumes um but yeah that pretty much sums up season eight ladies and gentlemen uh i tried to keep it light-hearted as much as i could <laughs> Uh, I, I give it a 1 out of 10. Let me know down below what rating out of 10 you give season number 8. Uh, I struggled to find anything positive to say about it. Uh, and again, like I said, if you're playing this game for fun and you enjoy it, that is fine. I'm not saying that you need something extra, but there are a lot of people that do need something extra to play it. And as a company, why would you not then do that extra something to make sure more people are playing the game? Because again, 2022 sports games, gaming in general most games have a reward. So why would you play this without a reward when you can play something else that does have a reward? That's what it comes down to. So 2K, you drop the ball. I, I hope, I hope we never have a season worse than this. The disappointment, again, based off last year, the disappointment has been immeasurable and surely it can't get worse. So that's going to do it for me today, everybody. <laughs> Let me know down below what you think. We'll be back tomorrow with a video about packs because that was the only thing we had to do this season. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you next time. And peace.